Well, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to another episode, episode 238, to be precise, of Buddhist Biohacker. My name is Lisa Gunshore, and as always, I am your host and mystic guide. I would love for everyone who's joining into the live to please share how you're feeling today. How are you feeling about this solar eclipse and new moon energy that's coming? Um, and also share where you're from, and you can obviously answer or ask questions all throughout. Um, and I am so happy and was so looking forward to spending time today with founder of Black Therapy, savior of all of our bodies, Deanna. <laughs> Thank you, Lisa. Love your <laughs> intro, by the way. Oh my gosh. How very exciting. Thank you for having Thank me again. Thank you. Oh, I'm so happy to see. I always love talking <gasps> to you as always. Oh, geez. And Lud <gasps> Ludwig's excited too. Come here. <laughs> Oh my gosh, I was trying not to have that happen, but it did. Um, but I was excited to talk to you today because so much is going on with Black Therapy here in Colorado, and I was really excited to share with you some of the things that are happening and talk about it because you always have so much wisdom. I don't know how you know all the things you know, but you know so much about the body. And I have questions. I have things that are happening with students cool. and and some things that happened with me that was actually really profound information that I'm excited to share too. So, wow. um, so yeah. What, well, let's just dive right in. I, I love questions. I'm, too. <laughs> I'm like, where are all the people? I see all you guys on here and nobody's commenting. It's time to throw some comments in there um, and say hello. Um, yeah. So let's start Deanna with what happened to my arms because this was really profound and and it led me to some really deep cool information and it also just validates the block and it's amazingness again um so let me get my dog to calm down so i can focus okay it's okay my little doggy <laughs> wants to participate with all of us i might just have to hold him i'm sorry guys this is, this is the joy of being live is things just happen sometimes on the live and I have to let go of my perfectionism and just let it happen. Okay. So here's what happened. I started teaching black therapy and yoga back with real people. Happy day, right? Two nice. years in the making finally happened. And what I decided to do was to start working with a trainer because I've kind of gotten out of shape and, you know, we've all been in the COVID coma um, for the last two years. And so the very first time went, did some workout with my arms. Part of why I did this, by the way, is because um, I had, I've had some really profound shoulder releases. I've always hunched, always. And it's been embarrassing as a yoga instructor to like do cow position, for example. And I'm like an S instead of a U, you know, <laughs> I mean, really, I mean, it's, it's kind of like, oh, this isn't good. So I really dove into the shoulders. I did the shoulder intensive. I've been working with that and just working with shoulders. And I had, I've had some really awesome releases in my shoulders. I can't even believe it. And where my, um, arms, you know, were kind of like this. I'm up here now. Nice. Yeah. And I've got more to go, but it's just amazing. So what I wanted to do was to start doing some weight training so that as my, my back and my shoulders are going back into proper alignment through the use of block therapy, I have muscles that are going to hold that in place. So that I do this workout seems like not a big deal. I mean, it was like a 30 minute training. Well, as you know, cause I wrote you, <laughs> About two days later, I could not move my arms. I couldn't bend them. They were in so much extreme pain. And I was laying in bed. I couldn't sleep. It was like three in the morning. I'm laying in bed just in tears. I mean, mm -hmm. I could not move my arms. And what really stuck out to me with this experience was as I was laying there, I was thinking of my little niece who's 24 and has RA. And I was thinking about her flare ups and I was like, wow, this is like exactly what she describes her flare ups to be is this exact thing. Yeah. And so as I was laying in bed, I did what I do best, which is research my health. And I started to look at muscle recovery. And that's when I wrote you and you suggested to do, you know, the elbows class and the hands class. And so I have to tell you, like, I did exactly what you said and Within 24 hours, I was almost normal. And within 48 hours, I was back to normal. Oh, wonderful. Oh, my God. It was amazing. It was like 
all the pain just released. It was clear. It was all in the elbows and in the tendons from lifting and not having the strength to lift what I was lifting probably, um, which is a whole other topic of conversation. And so I did some research in my genome, Deanna, and I don't make any amino acids. This is what I learned about my genome. And I did an amino acids test. I got the results back last week and I'm in the 30th percentile in like all 60 amino acids. Like I literally don't produce these amino acids at all. Like I'm, I'm broken in this area. And the other thing that I, I did as I went through my genome is within that, I also have like natural autophagy is not really for me. So I realized like this block is our natural autophagy tool and it's a recovery tool. And so I have been training for four weeks since then, you know, once or twice a week for the last four weeks. And I block what I lifted. So I do the blocking around those areas when I'm done. And I have had zero problems with recovery, even with I'm not supplementing amino acids yet. I'm not doing any of that, just blocking. And so I wanted to share that with you and also hear what you have to say about all that. So what happened, first of all, with your workout is you created a whole lot of inflammation. So what we, and and inflammation is the goal. That's where all of the healing is. So we have an injury, we have a trauma, whatever it is, the initial response of the body is to send whatever tissue that needs repairing all of the um, proteins and the oxygen and everything that's required for that repair process to take place. So we want to utilize that. We don't want to ice it. You know, I was trained traditionally the rice method, rest, ice, compression, elevation for the first 48 to 72 hours. But that is like not giving love to your newborn for the first 48 to 72 hours. So you have this injury, so to speak, with inflammation. What you did with blocking is you utilized the proteins and and you got them to do their job, which is to rejuvenate very quickly. And what that just shares is how incredibly efficient the body is at healing when we do the right thing with inflammation. So people often think inflammation is the problem. Um, it's, it's the adhesions that are the problem because they're what actually creates the inflammation because adhesions block blood and oxygen flow to cells. So then if your cells are not getting what they need, the body's registering this and it's like, well, we just need to send more and more and more. But if we're not utilizing it, then it can become a chronic stagnant condition. So it's really learning the the benefits of inflammation and how to support the body through the process um, Mm -hmm. when we we have that, as opposed to, again, pulling away and icing and ignoring. It's kind of like pain, right? We we don't want to move away from pain and mask it. We want to move into it so we can move through it. And that's what you did. You moved through it very quickly. That's awesome. Oh, so awesome. And and it really, it just taught me another way to use the block. I mean, ultimately it was teaching me, wow, like this block is the recovery tool. And what I think is interesting is what I'm specializing now is working with people who have MTHFR mutations and where they can't, and autoimmune, where they don't have we, we kind of hobble through recovery and methylation and removing of toxins. And, you know, the natural go-to for something like that and in the biohacking community, which isn't wrong necessarily, is the supplementation. And what I'm learning through experimenting with the block is I don't need the supplementation. If I'm working with the block, my body, it support, just like you said, it supports my body to naturally recover. And it's pretty cool because I have some bodybuilders in my class and they're coming and they're liking it. And I think, you know, the word is starting to spread that, you know, there a lot of people are coming to my class at the end of their workout so that they can do this. It's really important recovery. Yeah. And, you know, for people that spend a lot of time lifting weights, it's the understanding that when we do repetitive concentric contractions, what we're actually doing is taking away space within that Mm -hmm. muscle area that we're working. So the tissue becomes denser and that's partly the goal of lifting weights. However, there's a problem with that because it makes us literally compress and that blocks blood and oxygen flow. So, you know, my nephew Quinn, of course, you know, he yes. was a bodybuilder and, and he created change. Uh, a, a healthier way to work out the body is to integrate as many cells as you can into use. So 
when we're doing isometrics, for example, on the block or isometric exercise, the beauty of that compared to say like lifting a dumbbell, you know, a hundred times or whatever you're doing, you're, you're simply working in a very linear range with a lot of the weights, even if you're doing free weights, it's there, there tends to be those kind of movements. But when you're doing isometrics, like for example, if I'm pushing and I'm holding for a minute while I'm breathing, I'm literally creating more integration of cells into that action. And, you know, you can, you can change it up. Like you can do all these different things. So I can, I can hold, like, I know you can't see this. Like if I'm again, lifting the dumbbell, I can hold here, I can hold here, I can hold here. And the more that we can use the body in a more fluid, consistent way to support all of the cells use, then we have more cells that expand with the workout. So like mm. when we're doing even like um, this, we become very rounded this way and the cells that we're working out become bigger but at the expense of the cells that we're not working out does mm -hmm. that make sense so mm -hmm. we want to we want to bring all of the cells in the area and oxygenate and feed them properly and then we get a different kind of expansion but without the compression without the shortening without the the density that decreases blood and oxygen flow that down the road will have devastating effects to the body. I mean, it's one thing when you're starting out in the gym and you start to see the pump and you get really excited, but if this becomes something that you do for 10 or 20 years, there can be a lot of negative effects to, to that, that the body undergoes as injury. So we want to make sure that the body is open, balanced, aligned, and that every cell is, is being integrated into those actions. Mm. And that's what we're doing with blocking. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, I was just telling uh, one of the trainers at the club yesterday, like, I'm so grateful that um, I'm hyper stable, that I haven't, I, I'm not like this super flexible, like yogi that flings up and <laughs> stands. And I'm really grateful for that because my body has been the vehicle. It's led me to you. It's led me to block therapy. It's led me to supporting my system differently than trying all these other methods. And in trying these other methods and trying to integrate them, I just keep coming back to the block because that is, that's where it's at. And honestly, the more I've, you know, I've been blocking, I think almost two years, Wow. Um, you know, once or twice a week kind of thing. And in the last six weeks, it's gone from one or two hours a week to six to 10 between preparing for classes and doing my own blocking and then teaching. And I, I know what this block does. And I, I am like amazed at my body right now. Like my, my husband and I were walking into a restaurant last weekend and I saw my reflection in the mirror and I was like, Oh my God, my back is straight. Nice. Like, yeah. I mean, it's really, I've got some before and after pictures and I'll share those with everybody in a little bit, but it's, it's really amazing. Like I'm, I'm like, holy cow. And, 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 you know, in yoga, I like to do a downward dog and to have your back straight and to actually have my legs straight mm. has been like a profound shift for me because I, with tight hamstrings and all those things, and I'm really seeing and it doesn't matter how many times you block or where you block. There's always somewhere new to block. There's always something new. I found this pain point yesterday in my skull right here. It still hurts today. I still want to block it some more. And it was like, what is this? So it's amazing <laughs> to me. Oh, it's just, I could talk about the block all day. And I do, by the way, at the club, they're like, oh, here comes the girl with all, I'm always carrying my big bag of blocks. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's wonderful. <laughs> Yeah. And I want to share some of these comments. We've got some great comments. So um, Linda, welcome in. She's from sunny South Car or Cal Southern California. I almost said South Carolina. Wrong. Um, I am using my block on my lower back right now at my desk. Yes. Helps me to sit up straight. Wonderful. Um, April is here. She's another yoga therapist and block therapy instructor. And she said the results I'm getting um, in myself and with my clients are incredible. Denise, I'm so happy you're here, Denise. She said the fascia from my hip to my knee is so sore. Um, and uh, let's see, we've got uh, some questions. Deanna, how long should I wait to use my block on my stomach area after I eat a meal? Oh, this that's, that's really a comfort thing. You're, and, and the breath rule, your breath is your guide. Um, I'm all for it right after. If you can do it in a relaxed way, it will actually very much help to stimulate the digestive process. Um, but if it's too uncomfortable, then I would just, you know, 
wait maybe 15, 30 minutes and then give it a try again. And you can start on the bed just to get a little bit of pressure going. And then if you feel that's not enough, then certainly go down to the floor or you can stay on the bed. Oh, I love it. I love it. And then we have Michelle here from Ohio. Um, we have Mary here. We love Mary also. She said, I love you both here oh. from Seattle using my black daily. Nice. Loving the results. Yes. Oh my gosh. Well, you know, there's some woo-woo stuff I want to talk about too, but I have like another physical thing to talk about first, which is all of the fun bruising. So okay. last week, um, I decided to do inner thighs and hips for all my classes. So I did mm. the same class <laughs> and I woke up Sunday morning and you know, you wear yoga pants, you don't really pay attention to your body. And I wake up Sunday morning in my bed and I, I have bruising all through my inner thighs on both sides, like four <laughs> or five on each leg. <laughs> so I, I decided to ask my class, I was like, did anybody, does anybody have any bruising? And all of a sudden they're like, oh, like my arms, the one day had bruising and this, and, and I know that that is getting deep into the tissue, but I'd love to hear from you, you know, what's going on there. And, and, um, I do tell the class, don't ice it, like, keep it warm, keep moving, you know, keep working it. But I'd love to know like what, what you'd like to say about what's really happening there and how to manage those bruises while they heal. So first of all, bruising from breakage is very different than bruising from blocking because we're not breaking anything. What we're doing essentially is by melting those adhesions and moving blood into areas that were previously blocked, those cells that are finally receiving that blood flow are starving. They take all that oxygen away from the blood and they leave it blue. So really it's telling you, okay, you've made progress. You've gotten some blood in there, but we need to still keep working the area to cre create a better overall flow so that we can still pump more blood into that. So again, it, it's, it's a completely different uh, animal. It just looks the same. Mm -hmm. Well, I love it. And I've noticed, so after doing that last week, the other thing I noticed is my thigh muscles completely changed shape like overnight. It was like, oh, nice. like there's bruising, there's shape change. And I know that a lot of my students are having those same experiences, which is so, it's really cool to see like how everything's changing. And, and even this class, these are, these are new to folks who are all new to black therapy. They've never heard of it before. They're brave enough to come and try my class and they're, they're just loving it and coming every week, which is oh, so amazing. Oh, it's wonderful. so great. Yeah. And they're seeing real changes. I mean, already I I've, I've, have a couple uh, students who are IT guys mm -hmm. and they sit all day long and they're yeah. like, I actually feel like my neck feels better and my back mm -hmm. feels better. And so it's been just a really beautiful, it's been really beautiful to teach it and to really be able to share with everybody what's really happening here um, with the body. And um, we have another question here. Michelle is saying, would blocking be good while you have a migraine? Uh, yeah. And the nice thing about blocking when you have an area of pain, it's understanding that there's also cause sites to the migraine and the cause sites aren't in the head. They're in the lower legs and feet, the way that the fascia will wind around the, the shin and create pronation, which is the most common collapse. Some people supinate, the majority fall inward. That is going to essentially cause the body to get twisted forward in a rotation. And that's going to pull the head forward, which is going to block the, the flow here. So what would be great actually when you do have a migraine is to block the rib cage because the rib cage, of course, is the direct foundation of the head and the neck. So that's a lovely way to um, open up the flow, help pull out any of the inflammation that's up and through there without pummeling the area that hurts initially. And often just by working the rib cage, that can um, take care of the migraine. So um, that, that's just a, a really nice approach. But we, we do have a 21 day um, head, neck and head, neck and face. So I couldn't think of it. <laughs> it just ended yesterday. We did it as a community together, but that is an awesome program in the membership for people that struggle with migraines because we focus for one full week on the rib cage. Then we get to the shoulders and the neck and then up into the head. And part of that is the hair health class. And I actually have that class twice in that program. And what we do is we're literally gripping the hair and we're pulling the scalp away from the skull. Because of course, as we sit like this for decades, you know, whatever our posture is, and we start coming forward, fascia grips and adheres to try to 
stop the migration of cells from moving away from their home, which again causes more adhesions, which is why our hair tends to thin as we get older. We start losing the color because we start decreasing the flow to the follicles as well. But the whole reality is everything gets really sticky up here. And in fact, I love sharing this because um, one of the members in our community, Gary, even just shared two days ago, I think it was two months ago that I put the hair health program in the membership and he's been doing it every single day. And he said, this is the most profound thing he has done to decrease the neurological symptoms of his Parkinson's that he's ever done before. Mm. Yeah. That makes me want to cry. But it's all about, it's all about blood flowing and getting rid of those adhesions and, and really understanding cause sites as well. Another main area that's going to be a cause site for migraines is the art, the forearms and the hands. And the reason the calves and the feet and the forearms and the hands are so critical to work is because they're the furthest away from the diaphragm. So they're essentially the most frozen and cold. So how your hands, uh, how, how the arms basically get impacted with the collapse of the rib cage, they internally rotate. So anatomical position, which should be natural, is palms facing forward. If you look at pretty much anybody walking, they have the palms facing the back of the body. And that in turn pulls the rib cage forward and down. And then again, that pulls through here. Here's where the main arteries are supplying the head. So when they're blocked in any way, shape or form, that's going to create issues um, up the chain. So again, it's really sort of looking at the body as a whole and knowing what we need to do. And that's why with block therapy, we it, it's all about programs covering the whole body because the, the cause sites are the key. And when you just work on the pain site, you're just basically creating an opportunity for healing in a moment. But then you start moving in life and your fascia system gets pulled back into the pattern that your calves and feet and forearms and hands are in. So it's important to uh, release those as well. Yeah. And it seems like, I know for me, I seem like naturally guided to certain areas and then I work that area and then you get naturally like, sure, the hair health. I mean, that's, somebody's asking about MTHFR, by the way, and I'll answer that question in a minute, but uh, hair dumping is, is unfortunately one of my journeys. I'm lucky I have a lot of hair, so you don't notice, but I notice. Mm. And, um, <clears throat> and it's interesting because I've been working my shoulders and working my shoulders. And last night, um, I had time before my class and I was just laying there with the block and I decided to work my head. And then here we're talking about hair health today. And I'm like, yeah, okay, I get it. Like it's head time. It's time to get up into my head. And, <laughs> and the neurological piece is huge. I want to share too. So I had a class last Saturday morning, had somebody come because one of the other students told them, you need to come try this. And at the end of the class, she uh, shared with me that she has Rainers. Mm. And um, she said, this is the first time I'm having like warmth in my foot. My left foot is warm. She couldn't believe it from the, nice. the last class we did and working that inner thigh. And she was like, this is amazing. And so she's going to come back, of course. And um, but it's it's amazing. That was like her first class. And so to have like that kind of experience, like right out of the gate. And I know for me, my neurological symptoms have significantly reduced. And the biggest thing is the circulation for sure. I mean, I was taking a hot bath every single night just to get my blood flowing. Mm. And the last week, I noticed this last week, especially I was like, I'm hot. Like I'm never hot. And I'm like, I'm actually hot, like physically hot. Like this is amazing. Um, so it's amazing how that stuff works. And we've got more, uh, more stuff here going on. Um, Barry and Tammy, I love it over 50 golf. You guys, my dad's a huge golfer. So I'm, I'm trying to get him into the, into the block here. Um, but she said, we use block therapy to help golfers with low back pain, poor mobility. It's a game changer for their golf game. So see dad, if you're listening, you got to get on this. I'm just going to buy you a block. And then, <laughs> Oh, I love Tammy and Barry. They're, they're amazing. Any golfer, um, their program's fantastic. We're actually going to be, uh, launch or they us are going to be launching their new golf block program very soon so oh i'm so excited for that yeah, yeah my dad's an avid golfer and he has huge sciatic pain he's had back surgery i'm like get on this block dad so wherever you are dad i know you're listening to me so um <laughs> ah, oh let's see i love there's so many great comments you guys um so uh, Gail here from Bend, Oregon, I've been using the three series class on all things diaphragm and I'm finding yes. it to be helpful with my left hip. What do Very you think? Nice. 
Very nice. Yes, the uh, psoas connection. So yeah. the psoas muscle is the only muscle that connects the upper and lower body. It connects to the diaphragm and then into the hips. So it's really that key piece and uh, that class very much targets and gets to that psoas area. Oh, I love it. Well, somebody asked what what was MTHFR and, and if I could repeat that. So I just want to share. So um, I'm very excited, Deanna. Maybe I haven't told you, but I just was approved as a physician's member of Epigenetics Rx. So I now am doing genome analysis wow. and um, very excited because this is my work and my passion is point of conception work. So, um, and what that means is in Ayurveda, it's called Janma Prakriti. And it means at your point of conception, you were born with a particular genetic code a particular constitution. And those two things are to heal your karma and to achieve your dharma or your soul's purpose. So what I really want to help everyone with, with my point of conception work is analyzing the genome and looking at the physical components, but also going into your ancestral lines and working with my abilities as a medium and as a channel to really look at what, what did you come here to do? And how do you get healthy enough to do it? That's definitely been my journey. I know it's been your journey and I know it's probably everybody's journey. And so what MTHFR is, it's metatetrahydrofolate. And all it means is that there's, there's a couple specific genes that tend to have mutations where they don't work properly. And uh, there's two main ones that are focused on. And for me, I'm compound heterozygous. MTHFR, which means I actually have both of my genes in those two primary ones only work halfway. <laughs> now, the good news is they work halfway because if, if they are homozygous and you have both of them, you, you would be either full-blown MS, uh, autism. Um, there's a lot of issues that come with the homozygous. So I kind of got lucky. I'm just kind of like hobbling through, uh, my, my physical journey here, creating cells. And so, um, there's thousands of genetic mutations. There's lots of different ones and there's, those are just two main ones, but those are a big, uh, buzzword. So for those of you who are asking about it, what it means is we have an engine, we have technology in our body, and all, all it means is that there's parts in your technology that aren't quite working properly. And so the goal is to figure out how to get those to work so that the engine starts to run smoothly. And what I'm finding with the block and MTHFR very specifically is it's about methylating toxins and being able to clear toxins out of the body. So what happens is we build up toxins all throughout our life. So by the time we get into our 30s and our 40s, we start to have health crises. We start to have things like Parkinson's, MS. You know, we start to have these deterioration, Alzheimer's because we can't get these toxins out of our body the way that a, a normal person would. And 30% of the population has this mutation. And so what's really powerful about the block and, and what I'm experiencing firsthand is it's moving the toxins out of my body. It's moving them out of the cells. And so what I've been doing is I block and I take my binders, my charcoal and my clay either while I'm blocking or right at the end of blocking so that I can pull out everything that block just moved out of my cells, out of those adhesions can be pulled out with the binders and removed from my body. Um, I'm also, you know, going into dry sauna or infrared after I block, if I can, if I have access to that, um, to clear that out. So just to answer that question and to share, um, if you have difficulties, if you have autoimmune issues, um, again, 30% of the population, they're finding more than 30%, I think at this point, you know, the more you test, the more you have it. But um, again, natural autophagy, if, if you have a difficult time with that, the block facilitates it for you. That's what I'm finding. It, it's a, it's facilitating my detox for me so that I can stay healthy. What's so cool about that too, is when I was taking yoga teacher training years ago, I learned that we are born in this life with a signature posture and the goal of this lifetime is to break through that signature posture. So the way that I see that is we are born in this lifetime with the breath of our mother. So whatever breath she has 
if it's anxiety, anxious, if it's shallow, whatever that is, that's what we come into the world with. And then we're pummeled by life. So the challenge, and this is where block comes in, is because of the way the adhesions bind the rib cage, holding us down and out of alignment with that 2000 pound per square inch force, whatever that breath is, we can strengthen within that range only. With block, we can actually release those adhesions to integrate more of the diaphragm. So if you think about what happens when the diaphragm isn't working and functioning fully and optimally all the time, that this plate of muscle that moves up and down in the core is designed to make sure that every one of our trillions of cells is properly fed oxygen. And it's the driver. And that's why you feel warm now. You're turning on that internal furnace of your body compared to the muscles of the upper chest, which is more like a space heater. You know, it is just not that efficient at heating the body. So as we're creating more of that diaphragm to work on our behalf, we're suddenly feeding cells that weren't fed prior. And when you see things passed down from family, like in family traits, like say bunions or saddlebags or whatever it is, it's really the breath that creates the collapse and the way that the body goes through the aging process. That's really what gets passed down. And then the bunions and whatever it is, those are just fascia expressions of areas of the body that aren't getting properly fed with blood and oxygen flow. So when we block that rib cage and we expand the opportunity for the diaphragm to start feeding all of the cells in the body more effectively, I fully believe that any situation that we are dealing with can be reversed. And so it is. <laughs> yeah. I, I, and that we can, it, it's the liberation from our genetics. Yeah. Ultimately, they don't matter. And, and I, I'm living it firsthand and still learning. Like I just learned about the amino acids. So now it's another little journey for me to kind of discover what that means and, and how to work with that. And, and, but yeah, you, you become free. And I know that this, my posture has absolutely, you can see it in every family member and to see in 90 days, the change I've seen, um, it's so exciting because wow. I know it's like, oh, I'm so close. I, I just see the real change. I actually had a lucid dream. Oh, and fun. I know I had this lucid dream, uh, I don't know, two or three weeks ago. And in the lucid dream, I was like, I almost was like uh, uh, Gumby or something. Like I was like, you know, just reaching past my toes and like I was doing all these like flexibility things and I was showing my husband in the dream, look at what I could do, look at all this. And I woke up and I was totally smiling because I was like, it's happening, like the healing's happening and they're showing me that in the dream state, which is so awesome because oh, it that's really- exciting. Isn't it? Yeah. I'm like, well, and I figured out too. I mean, this is all personal, but I figured out the other day too. I've been blocking my hamstrings. Oh, I've got tight hamstrings. Well, I'm still having trouble getting a farther reach. Well, I started blocking behind my knee last night and I had a major shift. And it was weird because I, ne I never have this kind of time. And I had like extra time in the class, in the studio before the class. And um, so I'm excited because again, it's like you get led into these spots. It's like the block kind of leads you into another spot and there's so much to explore. And like, I've only, I'm a teacher and I've only been through, I don't know, maybe a third of what's available in the membership site. There's so much in there to dig into and like integrate and learn and practice. And um, it blows my mind at how frozen my body has been mm -hmm. and how, you can really make big changes really quickly. And it's just awesome. Um, let's see here. I want to share. So April says, I've been working deeply in the liver area with one of my clients. She was having major secondary healing. So I knew we had to stay there, then realized she had had her gallbladder removed. Mm. Um, so that's cool. And she also goes on to say, I realized she was healing the scar tissue of that removal and it helped her re release her. I don't know how to say that. Is it kyphotic? Kyphotic, yeah. kyphotic curve. Um, it's amazing to go back into our own histories. Wow. Nice. I love it. Um, Michelle, does blocking help your eyesight where maybe you wouldn't need a strong script for eyeglasses? 
sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Actually, just this morning, we finished our 21 day head, neck and face program. And this morning was the last call of that. And we actually went through a really cool exercise. Um, if you want to try this, just it, it's quick and simple to do. But if you do this on a regular basis, this will also help. So the first thing to understand is that the eyes are kind of like a ball and socket joint, like your shoulders and your hips, you know, they've got this range of motion. But again, for example, if this is how we sit, most of the time, we get adhesions, the eye sockets themselves, they start getting sticky, and the adhesions develop. So then we end up not getting proper blood flow to the eyes. So what's a great exercise on top of the blocking is if you take your eyes, and it's harder to do with the eyes closed, so I would recommend trying it. But look, think of a clock and start with 12 o'clock, look up for one breath at 12 o'clock, then one o'clock, then two, and go around the clock. Notice which number hurts the most. And you'll probably find that your eyes are shaking. Some people feel anxiety. And then go there and isometrically hold for a minute. And if you do that mm -hmm. like three times during the day, and then you continue to do that, in a very short period of time, you're gonna be melting through those adhesions inside the eye socket and improving that blood and oxygen flow into there as well. So we've got like all of the classes uh, working up through the head and the neck and, and the rib cage all improve vision because it all improves blood and oxygen flow. But that's just a great additional exercise that you can really do to um, target the specific adhesions and, and to really pump that flow into there. Oh my gosh, I love it. And, you know, somebody is asking, and I, I want to bring this up because I think it's worth addressing. So she, Katie's asking, she has lots of tension in her right shoulder. Where's the cause site? And it's been my experience that everybody's cause site can be different because everybody's body is different. Um, and so I want to hear what your answer is, Deanna. And I want to share it for the eyes. Um, so I have, um, I get an ocular migraine in only my left eye. So it's actually an, an issue with inflammation in the nerve. And <clears throat> I have found just through experimenting for me that if I block my feet, when that starts, um, it stops within three or four minutes and mm. I don't have the headache. So for me, that's like been one of those cause site journeys um, for me is figuring out where is this coming from and where's this inflammation coming from. And um, for whatever reason, whatever's going on by blocking my feet, it's actually, it, it changes it almost instantaneously um, going back to the migraines and the cause sites. But I don't know, what do you want to say about this, Deanna? So typically when we have pain on one side of the body, it's driven by the opposite side. So when I'm doing assessments and looking at people's bodies, the first thing I look at is the feet. And what one is collapsing and pulling away, kind of like a flat tire. So there's always mm. going to be one foot that's more like that. And then what happens is, let's just say it's my left foot that's pulling away from my body. Now my right shoulder is getting pulled into that system. And the right side of the body anchors. Think of like if you had Ludwig, Ludwig there and you wanted to take the dog <laughs> for a walk, but the dog doesn't want to go for a walk, it pulls back on its hind legs. So the one side of the body is driving away. The other side anchors the side that anchors is going to be where that tension is. So typically for the right shoulder, the left calf and foot will be major cause sites, as will the right arm and forearm, or sorry, the right hand and forearm, because that right arm is going to be getting internally rotated and stuck there as well. So we want to be able to release again, the most frozen areas in the limbs in order to release and create that mobility into the shoulder. I love it. Well, I want to get a little bit woo woo because I, I have to. <laughs> and, of course. <laughs> yes, yes. And I, I'm really just loving my Ayurveda training. And Dr. Ladd talks about fascia and he talks about fascia being consciousness in action. Nice. And I looked for the quote today and I couldn't find it. So I promise you guys I'll post it when I find it because it was so beautiful. Um, but it really, is this concept and this idea. And actually he talked about it in this documentary I watched recently too, um, about how when we work with our fascia, when we work with that tissue, we're actually activating our consciousness. And that coupled with creating space in the body. And I think that space is allowing us to receive these light codes, to receive, you know, what's yeah. coming in and, and trying to expand us. And so I want to dive into this. I want to know kind of what your thoughts and experiences are and, 
And let's just talk a little bit about the spiritual component of working with this block and working with our fascia. So Greg Braden wrote a book called The God Code. And he goes into great detail about like numerology and ancient language, but he shares that on the surface level of every cell membrane encrypted in the membrane is the message God lies within. So mm -hmm. when we're compressed, we are literally blocked from those cells and it's the, the cell membrane that really stores all of the wisdom of the universe. Everything in, in life is uh, um, a mirror of itself. So one cell is like an entire universe and we have trillions of these things. But if we're only really able to connect with 10 or 20% of them, then that's as much information as we're going to be gaining. And I always thought as a kid, you know, when they would say that, you know, we only use our brain about 10%. I believe that the majority of people are only oxygenating their cells about 10%. So mm. when we start to really connect to that proper diaphragmatic breath. Again, we can feed the body up to six times the oxygen. Like think about the amount that's 600% more. And I remember years ago, um, I had made like this statement in a newspaper article and, and, you know, somebody like, you know, is reaching back and saying like, you can't inflate the lungs that much more. And it's not about that. It's about absorption. So it's at the base of the lungs where the majority of the oxygen receptor sites reside. So if we're breathing through the muscles of the upper chest, like most people do, we're not pulling that air deeply enough into the lungs to reach that bed of abundance, nor are we exhaling the waste out of the body as effectively. And in 2014, they did a study proving 84% of weight loss comes through proper exhalation because mm -hmm. of the detoxification that occurs with that optimal breath. And with block therapy, we make that exhalation the central focus of the breathing until we get sort of further along in the practice and then we, we we do different things with the breath as well but from the perspective of consciousness when we have the space to hear what all of the cells in the body are saying then we truly are living each moment as a unique moment and an expression of our soul's highest path if we have adhesions riddled throughout the body as the heart is sending blood to those cells, the cells that don't receive any energy aren't able to send any information to the brain. So suddenly we get these gaps in the system and then the brain starts relying on memory. And that's how we get caught in these drama cycles or these patterns of things because we're, we're going on only a little bit of information. So the more open and spacious we are, the more we connect to the cell's intelligence and then we can truly hear what our cells are saying to us, which is really what God is, because God lies within. Hmm. That's so beautifully said. And, and yeah, I mean, my, my first real awakening was the moment I connected with my body. Hmm. And, and the block to me is the single, the only embodiment tool that exists. Because to me, it's, it's inviting us every time we lay on that block to connect with our body, our self, this vessel that came here. And like you said, helps us to remember, you know, that we're God's source and that God's source exists within us. And, and the memories that, can, that have come back for myself that I've heard some of my students experience, the 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 movement and the awakening and the other thing that i think is interesting is in the doshas and ayurveda um you know the the mamza which is the muscle dosha that that or not dosha i'm sorry what am i talking about datu so the mamza datu that is our muscle that's that's what you know the byproduct one of the byproducts is fascia um but what that feeds down the line from there is your fat tissue, your bone tissue, right? That goes into your hair and your teeth, your skin and your nerves are kind of last, the maja, the nervous system. And so if we're all stopped up in our fascia with these adhesions, then the nutrition isn't really going yeah. beyond that space. And if our, our nervous system is at the end of the line, and then we see all of these neurological challenges, 
all these issues with our nervous system and trauma, like we're not even getting the nutrition there. And so the block isn't just awakening us, but it's also allowing these other tissues in the body to finally get what they need. Exactly. I was thinking as you were as you're talking, like I live in a three-story building and there's eight units per floor. And it would be like, I only have access to, you know, say 20 units. And in every unit is a life. It's a story. It's part of something. So we want to be given access to all the doors in the body. And we want to have, you know, access to all of those memories and all of that space and all of the potential. Because again, I think we've, we have such a, a three-dimensional understanding of this body, right? Like it's, we, we think it's this solid thing. And I, I love the fact that there's actually as much space between the atoms as there is between the planets. So mm. to align and keep those cells where they're supposed to be creates that optimal space. And as long as there's optimal space, there's optimal flow, there's ease of movement, there's, there's nothing, there, there's no aging essentially, because aging results from compression from gravity pulling us down and twisting us and creating those adhesions which then you know as time adds up as you said in the beginning by the time you're 30 40 and older we have an accumulation of stuff but if we keep the space optimal nothing accumulates we pull in what we want we let go what doesn't serve and then it's this open system of constant flow and as long as there's flow there's ease and grace um, when there's a lack of flow there's congestion stagnancy, acidity, all the things that make us unwell. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Ease and grace. You know, that was part of, you know, it's funny to hear you say that, that uh, the Berkeley Psychic Institute, that was their kind of their motto. Mm -hmm. You know, it was kind of what you practiced as you learned how to open up your psychic gifts was that everything was ease and grace. So I love mm -hmm. that you said that. Oh, cool. <laughs> throwback, throwback reminder. Um, so I would love to hear what what's upcoming for block therapy. Like, what mm. what where are you on to next? Well, just yesterday we added a whole new tool. I saw the dowel. <laughs> yeah. So this gets very pointed in the body. I only offer it inside the membership because if you don't already block, it would be way too intense. But it's lovely because for those that are ready to move to a new level, it's very pointed and it goes very deep. So the first class that we did yesterday was for the upper back. So being able to get between those ribs and to get between the shoulder blade and the spine and onto the traps, that's it, it's lovely. And next month we're adding one for the pelvic floor. So if you can only imagine how oh. clean we can make the insides of the sit bones and you know, all through that space. And it sounds rather daunting, but it's really quite lovely. And just the, because again, what we ultimately want is the breadth in the body. We, we do this as we age, we get like to height this way and we balloon this way. So we want to soften and bring the breadth back. You know, most people, their shoulders, they do this all the time. We want to really open things up. So to be able to do that again, just creates the most space for optimal flow. I'm actually on, this is, this is awesome. Um, I'm on a platform. It, it's currently called Women's Cycles, but they are rebranding it and it's going to be called Moonrise. And mm. it has 60 practitioners from all over the world sharing things mm. to help women. So mine is the number one and it's going to be um, the first one with their relaunch to offer and it's intravaginal scar tissue melting. Wow. I know, I know. It was really fun. So, of course, we're using a towel because these people don't have blocks yet, but necessarily, but like we go through, you know, a number of different cool things to prepare the body for what's to come. And the funny thing is, is when I was talking with Philip Philippa, who's the founder of Women's Cycles, I said, Well, we can't videotape this. How are we gonna share it? So we did <laughs> we did a fun audio. So I was instructing her what to do when we were having a conversation. So um, that's really exciting. So that's coming very soon. Oh my God. That sounds exciting. Yeah. I, so I've been, I went through a 30 day period for 30 days. I blocked with castor oil, um, on my low belly, my pelvis, you know, all in that area around the womb. And 
it completely transformed my cycle. So, uh, yeah, you know, one of the things you learn in Ayurveda is all about yoni steaming and all these ways to kind of the castor oil packs to kind of detox and cleanse um, your womb. And man, that block with the castor oil is Mm. you need to cleanse your womb. That, that was the jam. Like I, (laughs) I had so much tissue release. I wasn't expecting it was probably the worst cycle I've ever had. Um, but since then it's been unbelievable. The, the color is completely different when I'm cycling. I mean, everything has changed. So I feel like I really cleaned at that space out. So now I'm excited. I'm going to have to go sign up for the other because oh, that's, that's very cool. Very interesting. <laughs> yeah. And also we have our block therapy Academy for kids. Uh, we're hoping to do a soft lunch in the summer and then like a, a real lunch in October. Um, my goal with that is I like the kids, the the kids need a lot of help. They, they grew up, their signature posture is from the breath of mothers that grew up in front of technology. Mm -hmm. So already collapsed in a very, very different way than when we were born. Right. So now the kids are coming out extremely twisted and dense and not breathing from their belly. Like our generation, well, I'm older than you, but you know, (laughs) <laughs> typically our generation, um, started breathing initially through the belly. And then over time, we lost that because pain, fear, and stress cause us to reactively hold the breath. And then it becomes a, a chronic condition that, you know, most people breathe through the upper chest, but kids are coming out breathing that way now. And that is scary because they're so depleted in oxygen. And what that means for the development is, um, you know, they're going to really struggle and they're already older, you know, like it's, so mm-hmm. my, my real purpose is to just get them to understand their bodies. It's a combination of doing block, but also educating so that they can really learn about fascia. They can learn, you know, where the organs are, what the organs do, but in a really fun way. And our youngest teacher, Leah Skusen, she's going to be heading up this program. And um, yeah, so just really, really excited about that. So we'll be letting everybody know when that's ready. Oh, I'm, I'm excited. Cause as you know, I've got four step kids who are all in front of technology all day and all night and yeah. all the time. And, um, so they definitely need that. Um, I'm hearing Ludwig bark and I wonder, um, I'm hearing we can block our pets and I'm thinking, Hmm, maybe we should be trying that. Are, are we blocking pets, Deanna? Is that happening out there? <laughs> Probably pets love the block, but, um, I've actually done fast, like fluid isometrics on pets with my hands. Okay. And of course, block is the self-care version of fluid isometrics. So um, yeah, I mean, fascia is fascia. doesn't matter if you're a human or an animal. It's all the same thing. And, you know, if you go in like, you know, lots of animals, uh, like bigger dogs, for example, might have like that hip dysplasia. You can get in and you can feel those adhesions. So it's the same thing. If you get your hands in there and you just hold and let them breathe. And they love it because they just intuitively know. And I love how our community often shares photos of, you know, the cat with his head lying on the block or, you know, they, they just, they're, they're drawn to it. I, I think they just innately know what's going on. Oh, totally. Yeah. Cauldron loves to lay on my block, my cat and uh, Ludwig we rescued and he has quite a bit of trauma from his past. So I've been thinking like, hmm, I need to get my hands. On. I mean, I pet him all the time, but you know, I need to get deeper and see what's going on there. So I had to throw yeah, that out just there, a little but... compression like that. And for anyone out there who has babies, um, because again, it's just key that we get that breath going. Um, a really simple thing you can do to get the, the baby breathing properly is if, if I'm hold, let's just say this is the baby's rib cage. If I'm holding the baby just this way and walking around and putting some direct pressure in, it's kind of like you're blocking, right? You're, you're creating mm-hmm. pressure over time. And then if you're walking around, you're getting a little bit more stimulation and movement. And you'll actually see if you lift them up initially, you'll be able to see the twist. And then if you do this over a short period of time, it doesn't take much. Like if you could do it for like three minutes a couple times a day within a week they're going to be hanging straight and then they're going to be accessing way more of our of the diaphragm we had offered Mm -hmm. that free a long time ago and that video is in our member site but i think i need to cycle that through again for free one of our teachers in training we used uh her little girl and um she loved it and she noticed a difference in her sleep and her digestion very quickly Oh, wow. Oh, yeah. That sounds so great for all the new moms that are out there. Mm -hmm. 
Oh, time just flies when we're together. I love you so much. Is it time much. already? <laughs> yeah, it's already been an hour. Can you believe that? Wow, I mean, it's no. Flies by. I love I, chatting with you too. We could do this for, for days, I'm sure. Oh my gosh, I agree. And, you know, I never thought of myself as, as somebody who would be all about the body and I still have so much to learn. Um, and I love that my journeys brought me here and brought me to you and brought me to the block. And it's absolutely been life changing for me. And I'm just scratching the surface. I know that, like, I know that there's so much more to come from it and I'm just exploring it. What I love is there's like an adventure to it. Cause like every time you explore something new, you learn something else about your own body. That, that to me is fascinating. Like even last night, like I said, I was like doing the neck and I was rotating. And then I thought, well, I'm going to do that on my skull. And sure enough, I'm finding all these spots and it's like, okay, like there's, there's something else to, to look at and explore. So for everybody out there who's interested in block therapy, I invite you to go to my website, BuddhistBioHacker.com. You'll see yoga and block therapy right at the top. I have hyperlinks to get your starter package, hyperlinks to join the membership, and hyperlinks to become a block therapy instructor for those of you who are interested in teaching like I have. I learned so much just getting certified to teach. Um, really, it's really been, like I said, it's just been exciting because I, you know, I, I've seen a lot of healing in my own body. I've had beautiful experiences and wrote a book about it. And yet, um, there are some things I still thought couldn't change and they're changing. So that's well, and I'm just about. so incredibly excited about you, Lisa, because you have such a vast knowledge of so many, so many things. And I can just see you putting things together that will just be unbelievable. And uh, I'm, I'm super excited to be part of your journey and to see where things go and to be here for you as much as you need me or want me. <laughs> oh, thank you. I love you so much. And um, everybody, hey, everybody who's watching, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Um, I would love that. And we are here every Thursday at noon for this season, um, which goes through November. And we have another jam-packed lineup in May. So definitely come back. And um, I, I've, I'm excited to just keep blocking. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Thank you, Deanna. Thank you, everybody, Thank you, for Lisa. watching. Love